Welcome to Jesus Changes Everything, a daily podcast dedicated to providing a fresh look at the ancient and glorious truth that Jesus not only reigns, but is busy about the business of bringing all things under subjection, that celebrates the wonder and the glory that he has been given all authority in heaven and on earth. It's time once again for our Atten Lay segment. And before I get to our uh, Latin phrase that I want to uh, unpack for you, I, I, I want to give you just a little bit more background about where this segment was sort of born. Uh, when I was a student in seminary, which is now, uh, gosh, going on more than 30 years ago, hard to believe, but more than 30 years ago, I was blessed to have as a professor of systematics uh, one R.C. Sproul. And not only was I blessed to uh, have been taught sound doctrine, but uh, I also learned uh, a, a really good way to uh, test by taking his tests. Uh, it was his habit to uh, make the bulk of his test, not the whole of it, but the bulk of it, uh, what he would call identification. And he would have a list, maybe 20 uh, either key names, key terms, or key dates. And my job in taking the test is to basically, in the space allotted to me, to fill in as much information as I can about the meaning and the context and the history of that term. So, for instance, uh, we might have on our test posse picare, which means able to sin. And we'd have to not only translate that into able to sin, but talk about Augustine and Pelagius and the dispute uh, over man's capacity and and posse non picari and non posse picari and non posse non picari and just get as much in there as we could. And th that was just a really helpful way to learn, really to define terms. And you usually knew when you're sitting in class, if Dr. Sproul used a Latin phrase, you'd, you'd put a, an asterisk beside it in your notes because you knew that's probably going to show up on the test. And one of those is what I'd like for us to consider today. That's the background. I actually worked on a uh, book years ago, never got quite finished, uh, sort of defining those terms that I picked up along the way from him. Uh, but there are other sources out there that are probably better than that. Today, I'd like us to consider this Latin phrase, extra nos. Extra nos, which being translated means outside of us outside of us. Well, what in the world could that have to do with sound doctrine and theology? Well, extra nos was a concept uh, that helps us get a clear understanding of uh, the distinction between uh, imputation and infusion or the language uh, at the time of the Reformation and today uh, that affirms that our uh, justification is forensic. That is, it is declarative. Well, extra nos, what this reminds us of is that uh, that justice by which God declares us just is not internal or intrinsic to us, but is credited toward us. It is outside of us. So God doesn't look at me on my own and say, well, he's righteous. But instead, the righteousness that he sees when he declares me righteous is the righteousness of Christ. The sin that he would see if he looked at me on my own uh, is what Jesus paid for. The obedience of Jesus in submitting to God's law is the righteousness that I now have by virtue of the same concept of imputation. It is not inherent in me. This is why... Uh, Luther was known also to use this other Latin phrase that we've already covered in this segment, uh, describing the believer as simul justus et peccator. Simul justus et peccator. At the same time, just and sinner. What Luther's saying is, in Christ, in union with Christ, by the imputation of his righteousness, we are just. That's why the Bible calls us saints. Saints. 
But in ourselves, apart from Christ, we are still sinners. That reminds me, I don't think I've spelled out extra nos for you. Extra is spelled in the Latin just like it is in the English, the X-T-R-A. Nos is N as in Nancy, O, S as in Sam, extra nos, outside of us. Now, there's a lot of uh, sort of pastoral reason to rejoice over this doctrine. That our righteousness is outside of us means that we can't wreck it. It's Jesus's righteousness that is declared to be ours, and it is therefore secure. God's judgment of us is not based on us, but rather on him. Now, in the Roman Catholic view, it is absolutely true that grace is essential that grace is shown toward and given to uh, the person that God redeems, but only insofar as that person cooperates with that grace is that person changed so that they become inside themselves, not externos, but inside themselves just. And God, according to Rome, will not declare someone to be just until they are in fact in themselves, though by God's grace, just. It's a big deal. It can sound complicated and technical and abstract, but it's a big deal. Am I going to stand before the living God and say, I thank you, God, because of his grace. I thank you, God, that I am not like other men. I thank you, God, because you helped me become good. Or do we instead beat our breasts and cry out, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. We come now to question 101 in our ongoing series on the Westminster Shorter Catechism. And if you remember from question 100, we have now finally uh, not only gotten near the end of the road, but uh, we've gotten into the subject of prayer and more specifically uh, to the Lord's Prayer. If you remember question 100, it dealt with uh, this question uh, about uh, what does it mean that we address our Father which art in heaven? And today we get to this question. What do we pray for in the first petition? And the Westminster Divines answer this way. In the first petition, which is, Hallowed be thy name, we pray that God would enable us and others to glorify him in all that whereby he makes himself known, and that he would dispose all things to his own glory. Let me say that again. In the first petition, which is, Hallowed be thy name, we pray that God would enable us and others to glorify him in all that whereby he makes himself known, and that he would dispose of all things to his glory. I've got to confess something here that uh, I misunderstood something fundamental here that I guess is probably a very common problem. I remember my father uh, teaching and explaining uh, this common problem, and I thought, yeah, that gets me. I'm, I'm painted with that brush. And it's simply this. Uh, most of us, I think, including me until I learned this, when we would pray, hallowed be thy name, uh, we thought we were making an indicative statement. We may have thought we were making this indicative statement in uh, sort of flowery uh Elizabethan style English, but nevertheless, we thought it was an indicative statement. Well, what's an indicative statement? Well, it's something that indicates something. Uh, It's something that says this is true, which is different from an imperative. An imperative says this should be done or you should do this. It's an ought or a should kind of uh, sentence. I thought, as many have through the generations, I thought we were saying, Our Father which art in heaven, your name is holy. Uh, 
Now, it is absolutely 100% true that his name is holy. But it's very much the case that because of his holiness that we would do well to realize that what we're saying here is not that his name is holy. But rather we are asking. That's why this is called a petition. The first petition in the prayer. We're asking God, please make this be the case. We want you to make this be the case in our own lives. We want you to make this be the case in the lives of others. We want to see that your glory is made manifest. That's how we want you to arrange things. Now, uh, this is profoundly fundamental. I'm not in the least bit surprised that this is, in fact, the first petition in the Lord's Prayer, because I would argue that at the end of the day, uh, our greatest uh, weakness, our greatest uh, failure to understand reality is that we are prone to thinking that God exists for our glory and our well-being. When the truth is that we exist for God's glory and his well-being. Now, let me add a caveat there. God doesn't need us. God's well-being isn't increased by us. God is altogether sufficient unto himself. But he creates the world and creates man not to increase his glory, but to show forth his glory, not to make him more holy, but to make manifest his holiness. And when you understand that that's the reason for reality, then all of a sudden it's a lot easier to handle hardship. It's a lot easier to understand. Well, why am I going through this? We're puzzled when we go through hardship because we think that life is here for me and for me to have things go the way I want them to go. That's not why we're here. Now, it's absolutely true that God loves his own children, that every thing that we receive from him is a gift from him, that he works all things together for our good. No question about it. But you know why he does that? Not because we're the end or the purpose of all things, but to manifest his glory. There's a sense in which uh, we we sort of confuse uh, the last two uh, Russian nesting dolls. We know all of our purposes sort of collapse into each other. We do this because we want to do that. We do that because we want to do this other thing. We do this other thing because our goal ultimately is... Th- so you, you, you reach for that ultimate and... When you get to the last two, our good and God's glory, it's not that God is glorious because he pursues our good, but rather it's because we the reason we have good is for his glory. He is the end and we are the means. That's a lot wrapped up in these very few words, hallowed be thy name. And that may be one reason why uh, the devil likes us to be confused by this. We're asking for God to glorify himself and let us always go to sleep each night knowing that this prayer is always answered in the affirmative. You've been listening to the Jesus Changes Everything podcast, a production of Dunamis Fellowship, the teaching outreach of Dr. R.C. Sproul Jr. If you've enjoyed this podcast, we encourage you to subscribe, which you can do at all the usual outlets, to tell your friends, and to spread the word. To learn more about the work of Dunamis Fellowship, please visit rcsprouljr.com. And join us next time on Jesus Changes Everything.